Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Storage Switzerland is a uh, analyst firm focused on storage, virtualization, and cloud uh, technologies. And really cloud is what brings storage, server virtualization networks together. And that's where we spend a lot of our time focused on how do we take advantage of this uh, advancement in technology to make sure that users are, are able to use it to its full potential without risking the corporation or the enterprise through uh, performance failures or, or data failures. So the, the key difference in the cloud data center or the cloud environment is that the user, when they have a problem, can't really report to IT or the system administrators where that problem is. The system administrators who used to, say, in the traditional fiber channel environment, uh, just through uh, sheer experience and trial and error sort of knew where to begin, now really don't know where to begin because of all the abstraction that exists in that environment. As a re result, you have a stretched thin IT staff that's now sent on a wild goose chase trying to track down problems and they're trying to track those problems down, if you will, in the old way. Uh, even tools, uh, traditional SRM tools, really only give them sort of a general idea of where to begin. So it's sort of like, you know, telling them what state it's in, but they don't even know what city to go, go find the problem. And so what's needed is something that's a different, that can really pinpoint the problem and direct the administrator to the exact location and, and really understand what's causing that problem. So the, the problem with, if we kind of drill down on the problems with uh, traditional SRM software that was really designed uh, pre-virtualized, pre-cloud uh, environments, is that they, you sort of have to know where to start to look at. So if you're counting on the uh, switch uh, tools to tell you that there's a problem, you've got to know that there's a, a problem in the switch, and that may be entirely the wrong place to look. And so what you need is a, a product that can give you sort of a, a, a total global view uh, of the environment and be able to overlay those views so you can look at it and say, okay, it's really, it looks like it's a switch problem, but I really got either a faulty cable or a chatty HBA or uh, different things like that. And so we really need to kind of up-level the ability of the tools that the administrators are counting on uh, in, in this area. So today what people are trying to do to solve these problems is they're, they're using legacy uh, software from their providers, of, you know, so their switch provider, they'll, they'll use their, the switch uh, diagnosis tool for their HPAs, they might use the HPA for the storage, they might use the storage diagnosis tool. And the problem is none of these packages really interrelate to each other. And so you have to guess correctly which component in this cloud infrastructure is actually the root cause of the problem. And the challenge with that is what, look, what may look like a switch problem might actually be an HPA problem or a faulty cable or uh, something in storage and you're spent now looking in the wrong place. You may, may make all kinds of changes to the switch and uh, one of two things will happen. You see no impact in the rest of the environment or then something else gets really messed up and you end up in a worse situation than you were before. One of the key differences in cloud is that you are trying to really maximize resources. And, and, and the key difference there is that the, the headroom, that, that the benefit of only using 20% of a CPU or 20% of storage or 20% of a network, that extra 80% was always there for oopses. And, and in a cloud environment, you're on purpose taking away that headroom because you want to maximize the investment across the board. Well, the challenge with doing that is now you've got to be real good and understand and be very proactive in the management of that environment. And so one of the key things that's, I think, just totally different than the, the legacy data center is the ability to monitor and manage in a real, real-time method has to be there prior to the project going in so that you know as you start to light up components of this cloud 
that you could monitor and see, okay, this is using too much resources or this one's not using enough, and you can make immediate and exact decisions uh, based on the data that's being collected. If you don't have that ahead of time and you have failure mid-project, the confidence in the project is lost, and, and what we've seen in many cases, you never get it back. One of the interesting things now that we see uh, becoming really prevalent is the claim of this sort of near real-time uh, diagnosis. Well, the problem is, is that what near real-time really means is not real-time. It, it may be a little faster than once a day, but every five minutes in a cloud environment for many, many customers is not going to be often enough. There's a lot that can happen in those five minute gaps in time that, that are never picked up. So what you really need is, is a continuous real time, real time. So you're monitoring as it happens in line every second. So that way you can really kind of overlap and really see where performance problems are or uh, errors in the network or anything like that. A, a five minute picture every so often uh, is really going to miss uh, much of the, could miss much of the problem. Uh, it'd be like if you're watching a movie and every you only watched the a frame for maybe 10 seconds every five minutes, you would probably have no idea what is going on in the movie. The, the problem with switch vendors and storage manufacturers uh, tools is is a relatively narrowly focused on their product. And, and even though, every, again, just like everybody claims to be near real time, everybody now claims to be end to end. And, and I guess to some extent that's true, but it's end to end from their point of view, not end to end from the sort of holistic view of the environment. So what you don't get in most cases is a complete capture of the, the total picture. Uh, again, going back to the movie analogy, it would be like watching the movie in the far left corner. Uh, you you kind of get the movie, but you don't really experience it like you would right in the middle of the theater. So I think a key question then is, how does a company like Virtual Instruments get this real, real-time data? Well, the only way that I can see to do that is to use hardware like they do with their product that it actually sits in line and, and sees uh, as it ha happens, every I.O. that goes across the infrastructure. That, that's the only way you're really going to get the real, uh, real-time data that's necessary to be able to do this sort of diagnosis. Now, in part of that then, if you're going to implement hardware into the environment, that hardware also has to be enterprise class. If we're talking about being able to manage and monitor Tier 1 applications, that monitoring becomes as important almost as the application itself. You, you, if, you can't suddenly be driving down the road and go blind and expect to finish the drive, right? So you have to have uh, enterprise hardware that matches the enterprise applications that go in and, and the other enterprise hardware in the environment. So that means capabilities like uh, phone home, hot swap, redundancy. And those new enterprise features are now available in their, in their latest generation of their hardware program. There are dozens of applications and all claim to, to, like we said earlier, do near real time and end-to-end -end management and all these different things. And so sorting the, the pile out and figuring out which one is right for you is, is, is a, a big task. Uh, I, I think the first thing to look at is, is really what do you need? It, if you're a, a medium size or, or smaller entity, you probably have some level of virtualization, but you can probably get away with most of the basic tools that are on the market. But as you move up into the enterprise and you start uh, virtualizing and, and running in a cloud tier one applications, then the game changes uh, uh, significantly and you have to be able to uh, monitor those applications in a real time method and understand, for example, exactly what tier of storage those should be on. You should be able to monitor LUNs and know that this LUN is generating this many IOPS and this uh, application needs that kind of IOPS, so I should move that application there. Or the opposite, this application doesn't need that kind of performance, let me move it to a lower performance and more cost effective tier. And again, going back to real time, uh, applications change. And one of the advantages of a cloud environment is it's much easier to move things around. Well, moving things around is great if you know where to move it to. But if, if all you see is this sort of plain vanilla view of your environment and you don't have the granularity to understand what the differences are, 
then you're not really going to be able to take advantage of a cloud environment. So if, if we look at the phases of virtualization, we're, we're in most cases well past the sort of initial test and, and uh, initial deployment phase where we sort of virtualize servers that nobody really cared about. And, and now we're starting to really focus on tier two and now really tier one applications. As we move into those environments, if something goes wrong, people pay. And we've got to make sure or the user has to make sure that they're able to deliver consistent service levels. As a result, we think that products like Virtual Wisdom that can provide true real-time uh, analysis of the environment and, and give you a true end-to-end -end overlay of what's going on in that environment become essential tools to that environment to make sure that you're able to deliver the same or not, if not better tier one service levels that you had prior to going to a virtualized or a cloud environment. So when we've been uh, following virtual instruments for over three years now, and, and during that time I've always felt that they were designed for sort of extreme data centers, large compute, large storage, large user count. Well, what's interesting now is that really thanks to cloud and, and virtualization and capabilities like that, the market is actually catching up to virtual instruments. And so that they've already been vetted for the world that most cloud environments are coming into. So thanks for letting me speak to you today. Again, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. For more information, please go to our website. We have a special landing page, uh, www.storage-switzerland.com/vi, and you can get all the information about this technology there.